Welcome to St. Andrew's Episcopal Church. I'm Father David Bridges, and it is Sunday, October 16th, 2017. Today we're going to talk about gratefulness, what it means to be grateful for what God has done for us, and what responsibility that leaves us with. It is not a burdensome responsibility to be grateful. It is actually a joyous thing. We'll talk about the wedding banquet that the king gave and none of those invited showed up. Let's join the service now at St. Andrew's Episcopal Church. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we pray that your grace may always precede and follow us, that we may continually be given to good works. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of Exodus. When the people saw that Moses had laid to come down from the mountain, the people gathered around Aaron and said to him, Come, make gods for us. Who shall go before us? As for this Moses, the man who brought us up out of the land of Egypt, we do not know what has become of him. Aaron said to them, Take off the gold rings that are on the ears of your wives, your sons, your daughters, and bring them to me. So all the people took off the gold rings from their ears and brought them to Aaron. He took the gold from them, formed it in a mold, and cast an image of a calf. And they said, these are your gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt. When Aaron saw this, he built an altar before it, and Aaron made a proclamation and said, Tomorrow shall be a festival to the Lord. They rose early the next day and offered burnt offerings and brought sacrifices to well-being. And the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to revel. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are your God, O gods, O Israel, who brought you up out of Egypt. The Lord said to Moses, I have seen this people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone so that my wrath may burn up against them, and I may consume them, and of you I will make a great nation. But Moses implored the Lord his God and said, O oh Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn your fierce wrath, change your mind, and do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self and saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his 
mind about the disaster that he planned to bring on his people. The word of the Lord. A reading from the letter of Paul to the Philippians. <coughs> my brothers and sisters, whom I love and long for, my joy and crown, stand firm in the Lord in this way, my beloved. I urge Yodia and Sinti to be of the same mind in the Lord. Yes, I ask you also, my loyal companion, help these women, for they have struggled beside me in the work of the gospel, <coughs> together with Clement and the rest of my co-workers, whose names are in the book of life. Rejo rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I will say, rejoice. Let your gentleness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. Do not worry about anything. But in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be known to God. And the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, beloved, whatever is true, whatever is honorable, whatever is just, whatever is pure, whatever is pleasing, whatever is commendable, if there is any excellence, and if there's anything worthy of praise, think about these things. Keep on doing the things that you have learned and received and heard and seen in me. And the God of peace will be with you. The word of the Lord. Thank you, God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Once more, Jesus spoke to them in parables, saying, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a wedding banquet for his son. He sent his slaves to call those who had been invited to the wedding banquet, but they would not come. Again, he sent other slaves, saying, Tell those who have been invited, Look, I have prepared my dinner. My oxen and my fat calves have been slaughtered, and everything is ready. Come to the wedding banquet. But they made light of it and went away, one to his farm, another to his business, while the rest seized his slaves, mistreated them, and killed them. The king was enraged. He sent his troops, destroyed those murderers, and burned their city. Then he said to his slaves, The wedding is ready, but those invited were not worthy. Go therefore into the main streets and invite everyone you find to the wedding banquet. Those slaves went out into the streets and gathered all whom they found, both good and bad. So the wedding hall was filled with guests. But when the king came in to see the guests, he noticed a man there who was not wearing a wedding robe. And he said to him, Friend, how did you get in here without a wedding robe? And he was speechless. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot, and throw him into the outer darkness, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord. Two stories pertaining, pertaining to gratefulness, memory and gratefulness. Our lives are built on memory. We are who we are because of what has happened to us, good and bad. It shapes who we are. Back in 1992, I was invited to speak before the American Bar Association in Chicago and I had recently gotten my private pilot's license. So we decided we would fly. And if you're familiar with a, an airplane called a Cessna 152, it's about as big as a Volkswagen. <laughs> and so whoever you're riding with is pretty much shoulder to shoulder the whole time. So Marla and I hit it up. Did the, did the gig. Got back in the plane and headed down south. <coughs> About the time we crossed over Kankakee, Illinois, 
we experienced wind shear. And the airplane turned up like this and started going down so fast the altimeter looked like a window fan going backwards. Well, needless to say, I'm trying to get the plane corrected. Marla's over here speaking in tongues. I mean, she's pretty well. <laughs> I'm shouting at the airplane, you will not do this to us. And it straightens back out. We lost about 500 feet in a matter of seconds. So we turned back around, and as we approached Kankakee Airport, which is an uncontrolled airport, I called out to Chicago Control um, that we were making an emergency landing at Kankakee, and the storms had closed in, and so there was so much rain hitting the windshield I could hardly see. But Chicago Control said, well, now you've got a big twin in front of you and then a larger single engine. You need to just control yourselves and go in behind them. And I could see those two airplanes. By the time we landed, the wind was blowing so hard and the rain was so hard, I'm looking out the side window to see the runway. And as we're taxiing to park, the plane's trying to fly again because the wind is blowing so hard. So we finally got stopped, got out, we tied it down, we're soaking wet. We go into the terminal and there's the pilot and co-pilot of that big twin. And that pilot's tied sideways, one shirt tail hanging out. He's a wreck. And he said, wow, we stole one from the Grim Reaper today, boys. And I said, yes, yeah, we sure did. And I was grateful. <laughs> How many times have we had events happen in our lives where we can look back and go, I'm grateful. And we remember. And it's those memories that cause us to live into the gratefulness. That, Lord, you saved my life that day. And then we can wind the clock back and we can remember, Lord, you saved all of our souls on the cross at Calvary. You did the unthinkable. You became flesh and dwelt among us. You came to live as one of us, even though we were sinners. You gave everything for us, a total selfless giving of God himself so that we could have life. The one thing that we could never earn for ourselves, that we could never buy, that we would never deserve, except for Jesus Christ. And we need to be grateful. And then we hear this story in Exodus. And it's almost unthinkable, isn't it? These are the people that saw the miracles of God. These are the people that saw the plagues that God put on Egypt. They saw the pillar of fire leading them to their promised land. They saw the Red Sea divide. The seabed dry up. Scripture says like a dry desert. They crossed on dry land. They saw this. How can you unsee looking on either side and here's a wall of water and you're walking on dry land across the sea? How can you unsee that? They got to the other side, they look back, and they're terrified, the story says, because here comes Pharaoh's armies charging in after them. And when the last of those children of God got up onto the drier land up above, the sea crashes in on Pharaoh's armies. How can you unsee that? And then what do they do? First of all, one flaw is, and look at that text. The man, Moses, who brought us up out of Egypt. That's the first mistake. They're forgetting that it was God that brought us out of the land of Egypt. But this man has been gone so long, we're tired of waiting. We need something to worship. Wow. They forgot all of that. They forgot all that happened to them. Their gratefulness just fell to the side. We need something to worship. And Aaron, of all people, Immediately goes for it. Sure, give us your gold, I'll make you a calf. And they set that up on the pedestal, and what do they do? They bow down to it, they worship it. This is the God that brought us out of Egypt. The level of ignorance is surprising, isn't it? So they worshiped it, and what, what else did they do? They fell into revelry, drunken revelry. We're going to party in front of our new God. Now how different is the world today than that? The things that people raise up as gods are amazing. 
They've totally given up gratefulness. They, they don't even realize what God has done. The majority of the people in our world don't even realize they were made by God. They were saved by God. They're, they could be guided by God's Holy Spirit if they would just allow it to happen. But the memory is gone. The memory of all of these things is gone. And maybe they were never taught. Because look at where we are in history. A whole generation of young people was rejected by the church in the 1960s. They went to other religions. Their children then were not raised in the church. Their children are not necessarily being raised in the church either. So what happens? There's no memory. There's no implanted memory of God and what God has done. So where do you get gratefulness? Well, it's just not there. And the evidence of that is, look at how people are at each other all the time because there's no gratefulness. We don't see each other, in, in general in the world, we don't see each other as brothers and sisters anymore. It's always an adversarial relationship. You say something and you may mean totally well in saying it, and guess what happens? Somebody comes back with some snide remark or some attack when you were just trying to do something good. There's no gratefulness because there's no memory. And now, we come to this gospel story that bites a little bit. <laughs> and sometimes the gospel's supposed to bite a little bit. Those who were called to the banquet had other things to do. Well, I'm just too busy. I'll go to my farm, I'll go to my business. Oh, or worse yet, we'll just kill the messengers and that way we won't have to worry about it. <laughs> because then there's no memory. You see, if you don't accept what's being offered, there's no need for gratefulness because there's no memory. And so then they are, what are they? What happens to them? They are then killed. But the interesting thing about this one that doesn't have on a wedding robe, boy, that's a tough one, isn't it? Invite everyone in. But wait a minute, here's someone that's not dressed right. But you see, that's not what the story is really about. The story is about those who would presume to use God for their own purposes. Well, I'm saved, so I can do anything I want to do. I've probably told you that story before, but it's probably worth telling you. I went to college with a man that he was my roommate. I'd known him for a good long time. And he had a girlfriend at home who he proclaimed was his fiance, and yet he was sleeping with everybody that would stand still. And he was always on to me about my religious beliefs. I said, okay, wait a minute. Let me get this straight. You have this girl at home that really thinks that you're being faithful, but you're not. And yet you want to give me a hard time about my religious beliefs. And he says, well, I'm saved, so God has no choice but to forgive you. That probably qualifies as not having on a wedding ring. <laughs> and the problem with that is that we can't use God for our own purposes. Because it's the same thing as taking God off of the pedestal that God deserves to be on and putting the golden calf on that. And we all have the risk of having our own little golden calves, don't we? So it's important that we have the memory of what God has done and is doing. And that memory is that we were created by God. We were marvelously made by God. We were all given the seeds of greatness and invited to live into that greatness. But what happens instead is we get sidetracked. We get sidetracked by the enemy that wants to put other gods on the pedestal. And if you don't believe that the enemy is working, then we need to have a good long talk. Because you see, it's not that, that our enemy jumps out in front of us and says, here I am. Because that would be easy, wouldn't it? No, no. His latest trick, oh, and his best trick ever, is that I'm not here. If he can make enough people believe he doesn't exist, I'm not here. Don't worry about me. He can do anything he wants to do. And as soon as that happens, lives go upside down, the world goes upside down, relationships end, and you see the mess we're in. Because so many believe that he's just not there. The fact of the matter is, Scripture is filled with references to the evil one, our enemy, our adversary, 
He's given a name. You don't give a name to something that doesn't exist, do you? You see, that's the issue. We need to remember that we are saved for a purpose. We're saved from something. We're saved from eternal death and damnation. Think about that for a minute. Eternal death and damnation. That's what we're saved from. It is through the blood of Jesus Christ that we are saved. It is that sacrifice, that, that totally selfless sacrifice of God that says, I love you, even though you're in sin. Even though you can't help yourself, I love you. And I will redeem you with this precious blood. And when you confess that precious blood as part of your life, then your name is written in the Lamb's book of life. Wow. Wow. That's what so many people are missing out on. They're missing out on the truth that we have this opportunity to have our names written in the book of life. I remember many years ago in a Sunday school class, the question came up, when you die and you get to the gates of heaven and Peter says, why should I let you in? <laughs> I said, well, I want what I deserve. And the teacher said, oh, Lord, no, I don't want what I deserve. I deserve hell. I want what Jesus has given for me. That's what I want. And so we cannot presume to have ever reached that point of saying, I'm okay. Got it all straightened out. Everything's good. I'm fine. We must be watchful. Remember, Jesus says, be watchful. Pay attention, for your adversary, the devil, is prowling about. Prowling like a roaring lion. And that's part of memory that we need to hang on to. I was recently reading an article that, that said that it's, it's pretty popular, and, I, and I've done it myself. I talk about the, the, the devil being a lion that has no teeth. You've heard that one before. And this writer said, that's very dangerous. Because what you're doing is you're acting as if he's benign. But he's not. And there will always be this working, this working that he is doing to try to find a way to get to us. He works very hard up through the areas that we wouldn't even think of to try and take away our memory of the good that's been done for us. To try to cause us to take God off of the pedestal that God belongs on and put that golden calf on that pedestal. And if we fall into that trap, and our memory goes away and our gratefulness stops. We are forever lost. So always be mindful of some very basic things. If you, if you feel like you're at the bottom of the pit, if you fall into despair and depression and, and life seems to be falling apart and crushing it on you, remember these important things. You were made in love by the God of all love. You were made marvelously. You were engineered perfectly. You were saved by the grace of Jesus Christ, given for you, freely given for you. You are guided by the Holy Spirit of God as long as you hang on to that memory of gratefulness. And no matter what goes on in this world, no matter what happens in this flesh, it doesn't matter. Because when you leave this flesh, you will fly away to heaven because your name is in the Lamb's Book of Life. And that is worth being grateful for. Thanks be to God. Thank you for joining us today at St. Andrew's Episcopal Church. St. Andrew's is located at 555 East 3rd Street in Grove, Oklahoma, on the shores of beautiful Grand Lake of the Cherokees. We're here every Sunday morning at 10 a.m., every Monday through Thursday at 8.30 a.m. for morning prayer, and on Wednesday evenings at 5.30 p.m. for Holy Eucharist. You may call us at 918-786-4113 or find us online at standrewsgrove.org. We hope to see you soon. And until next time, may the peace of God that passes all understanding Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the blessing of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you now 
and remain with you forever. Amen.